Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to Code Lab on Tinker Live. Now, this is the show that helps students and teachers make and create with Tinker Code. Uh, we're very excited today because today is the first day of Computer Science Education Week. Uh, and it is awesome. You know what that means. It means it's also Hour of Code, uh, which is a, just a the best time if you're a STEM educator or uh, an educator in general, you're gonna have a great week. I've been doing Hour of Code since 2015 when I was with my own students in my school outside of Chicago. Uh, and now I get to share it with so many of you. There are literally like thousands of kids watching today from all around the world. And we look so much forward uh, to the next 40 minutes because we're going to meet a real NASA expert. We're gonna show you how to create an, an authentic mission patch and we're gonna learn uh, what goes into those designs and how they are inspired, um, uh, what inspires uh, NASA to, to make these types of designs. And we're gonna take your questions. Uh, we are so excited to have a NASA expert on that's gonna show us. We, we brought in the mission patch expert from NASA to uh, talk to us about mission patches. So we're, we're very, very excited. Uh, it's going to be a, a wonderful show. So sit back and uh, relax and let's get ready to create. Are you ready to create? Uh, I am. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, let me share my screen here and we will do this. Excited. All right, so who am I? <laughs> That's a good question, right? Um, I am Daniel Rizak. I am Mr. Rizak. Uh, you, if you ever, you know, have done Tinker before, you may have heard uh, Daniel at Tinker. Um, I am a former STEM teacher, science teacher, tech coach, director. Oh, but that's not me. There I am. Oh, there I am right there. Uh, and um, I'm just all around excited about uh, Tinker. I've been using Tinker for many years, and now I get to share Tinker with, uh, with the world. So that's exciting. Um, so that's me. Uh, what are we doing today? Today we're doing Hour of Code with NASA. We are uh, designing the mission patch. These are part of our NASA projects. We, uh, we have a whole NASA page on Hour of Code, uh, which is, um, uh, there's about seven projects there that are really exciting. Uh, so we're going to be designing a mission patch. And our agenda today, basically we're going to get to know our guests a little bit. Uh, we're going to walk through and try to understand our project. We're going to then have a moment where we actually, uh, you know, spend good, you know, 20 minutes actually creating. And we're going to give you some tips and tricks for how to build the best mission patch uh, you possibly can make. And then we're going to have a time for you to ask uh, questions and ask uh, of your, our NASA expert. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so get your questions ready. Uh, by the way, uh, you may notice I have a really cool background here, and I'm going to show you at the end of today's show how to get one of these cool backgrounds. We have six in all, uh, so I'm going to make sure how you, you guys stick around and show, uh, we'll show you how to do that. Uh, so we do have a couple of things we have to go for, through before we bring on our NASA expert. One of those uh, is we have a live chat, okay? Some of you have already joined the chat. You're already in there and you're asking questions, which is awesome. You're asking for resources. So we have a Padlet. It's moderated. All we ask is that you don't use your, uh, you know, last names, um, no, no personal identification personal identification information, that type of stuff. We want to feature your questions here during the Q&A, and our awesome moderator, Maddie, is going to put those in for us so that we can uh, show off your live questions. So that would be the best way to do that if you want to get your question answered live by our NASA expert. So let's get started, right? Right. We, we want to walk you through. I know we've. Uh, if you don't know how to sign in, you don't know where the what projects are, uh, we want to make sure that you uh, get to the right spot. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through on how to get to the NASA project, uh, and uh, here's where, here we go. So let's get started. First thing we want to make sure you do is you're going to sign in, right? Um, and the reason there's two ways to get to to the project. One is to sign in and go in through your uh, your folder um, that's in your class. Now, if you don't have one, uh, if you don't if you're not part of a class, it's okay. Uh, there's another way to do it. And we want to make sure you know both ways to do it. But the biggest deal is we want to make sure you're able to save your stuff. So uh, we're going to sign in at tinker.com. We're then going to go to a uh, student. You're going to sign in as a student. Uh, and there's a few ways to sign in. If you use a Tinker username or you can sign in with Google or you can use the Tinker Smart Pass, however you sign in, that's totally uh, up to you. Um, so do that. Then you're gonna go to My Classes, all right? 
Um, in my classes, we've actually put all the Hour of Code stuff in a folder right there. So you can go right there inside your folder. There's an Hour of Code folder. Uh, hour of Code folder. That's one way to do it. Um, and then you can go right down and start your mission patch design project there. The other way is to just go to tinker.com slash NASA. But again, I will highly recommend that you sign in first. Uh, that way, when you start your project, everything gets saved. So I want to make sure that you don't lose anything. Now, if you don't have an account and you don't want to go through that, yes, it is possible to just start the project, uh, and but then you wouldn't get saved. So I just want to make sure you guys know how to do that, how to uh, start your project, where to go. And if, uh, if you're in the chat, uh, you can ask questions. Maddie will give you those links uh, if you need them. So that brings me to a very special guest that we are going to have on today's show to help us with our mission patch. Uh, I'm about to welcome Amy Crane. Amy is the Artemis Strategic Communication Specialist. So hopefully you're familiar with the Artemis program uh, because it's, it's uh, awesome and uh, they're doing so much uh, amazing work and we're getting ready to go back to Mars. But uh, Amy is an alumna of Kent State University uh, she graduated with honors, of course, because if you work for NASA, you know, you got to work, graduate with honors, right? Uh, received a BFA and MFA, MFA in visual communication design. Uh, for the past eight years, she's been working for NASA as a strategic communication specialist and project management lead for the Orion spacecraft program and the Artemis program missions. Uh, as a deep space and science advocate, uh, Amy is responsible uh, and passionate uh, about sharing NASA's human space exploration story through visual communication, storytelling, and data visualization, striving to inspire the Artemis generation across the nation and around the world. Uh, so let us welcome to the show, Amy Crane. Hi. Hi, Amy. How are you? Are we working? Let's see, is the video working? Not yet, but we'll get there. There you Let's are. See. All right. Uh, well, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Code Lab. We're very excited to uh, to have you on today. Um, I am too because I'm a former science teacher, and this kind of stuff always just makes me really excited. Uh, and so, uh, so again, welcome, and uh, thank I'm you. Glad, I'm glad you could be a part. Um, so I'm sure you know we're talking about a mission patch and. Uh, uh, we should probably start by talking uh, just about your role and, and kind of what sure. you do at NASA and you know what brought you to NASA. You know, that's kind of uh, uh, always exciting. Everyone wants to know, how did they get a job at NASA? Yes, that is the number one uh, question that I get. It was really interesting because um, I have always been into art and design. Um, I took a lot of art classes in school, uh, but I also love science and space and astronomy. So I, I, was, I had a really hard time picking a career path um, because I just, I like both those things. I thought, is there even a job, anything that I could do um, that could kind of, uh, bring those, bridge those two ideas together. And so it was really exciting because um, I knew in eighth grade that I wanted to be a graphic designer. So I, I kept taking classes and kept doing things like that all through high school. Um, and then when I graduated college, there was an opportunity. I had, like, as you had mentioned, I had did um, design work, uh, visual communication design and graduated with that degree. There was an opportunity to um, work for NASA. So I'm, I should mention before, I'm in Ohio. I'm from snowy Ohio right now. Um, oh, so awesome. I'm at the uh, Cleveland, uh, in Cleveland. So the uh, NASA Glenn Research Center is here in Cleveland. So that's where I'm at. And there was an opportunity for an internship. And so they were looking for somebody that had art and design background that was passionate about space and about NASA, uh, but that could work on um, museum exhibits. They needed somebody that was good with storytelling, that could work on exhibits for our local science center and, and do some traveling things for outreach. And I said, I'm your person. And it was great. So actually I started out as an intern and was so passionate about the work there and, and what everyone was doing that I pursued a, a career there and uh, started out with the Orion spacecraft program. So I did that for a little bit. And then just this year, um, I'm now working with NASA headquarters, which is in Washington, D.C., working remotely on the Artemis program. And I'm so excited to talk about the Artemis program and kind of what we're doing now. So that's kind of how it started through an internship at NASA. 
That's fantastic. And I think you bring a lot of, you, you surprise me in a lot of ways because I think uh, for our kids that are out there, you know, um, I, I, many of them probably think, oh, well, if you work for NASA, you know, you've got to have an engineering degree and you got to yes. have all these other things. So uh, if you talk to, speak about that, because I think a lot of kids out there probably are, are scratching that one off their list thinking oh, that maybe I'm not, uh, not going to be able to work there. Yes. And what I, I, I think is really interesting. I always tell people I'm the A. If you think of STEAM instead of STEM with the arts, I do a lot of that, um, uh, the art and design part of it. I can't tell you how many people uh, think that, you know, graphic designers, illustrators, um, uh, computer designers, gaming designers, that they would never think of, of an opportunity to work for NASA. But we've got all these people. We have animators, motion graphic designers, uh, communicators, um, people that love to tell stories and to draw, um, journalists, uh, uh, public affairs. There's so many different things in communication uh, that NASA is not always just astronauts and engineers and scientists. What's exciting, what I tell people is sometimes with my job, I feel like a translator. I take all this really cool high-tech stories, this amazing things that our engineers and our scientists and astronauts are doing, and I'm able to use um, pictures or or designs or color or storytelling to be able to tell those stories to the public. So I, I sometimes I feel as like a translator, but it's such a, a needed job and position at NASA to be able to get these stories out, all the exciting science and research that we're doing uh, to students and teachers and, and the, the world, really. So it's very exciting. That's fantastic. And I think that just sends a great message to anyone out there who has, you know, performative skills, right? You know, there's, there's uh, kids that are on stage and they're singing and they're doing design and they're doing art and that there's definitely a place for them uh, at this, you know, at this amazing organization uh, for being able to, like you say, tell stories basically. Yes. Um, yep. Which is, uh, you know, what, what, you know, what this kind of communication design is, is really all about. So I think you kind of want to tell us a little bit more. I think uh, we're going to be getting into our project soon. Sure. So uh, I think what we'd like to see a little bit is, is kind of like what goes into a, you know, a mission patch thought process. Uh, and uh, I think you can go ahead and share us uh, your sure. screen and kind of walk us through, you know, what is, uh, you know, how do, how, what is NASA, how, how do they, uh, you know, come up with these ideas and, and what comes into the process of, of, of a design in, in a mission patch? So sure, let me see if I can share my screen. Sure. Now it's not showing my PowerPoint. One second. Well, we have a backup if we need it. <laughs> Let's see. We might have to do that for some reason. Let's do it. That's okay. Okay. I can do it. All right. Oh, this that? is perfect. Thank you so right. much. I, that's fun. strange. So this is really exciting. I wanted to share with you guys a couple things that, that graphic designers are thinking about. So everybody should know this logo. This is our NASA logo, which we affectionately at NASA call the meatball. So if you ever hear anyone from NASA talking about the meatball, this is the logo that we're talking about. So this is... Um, this, this is what we call our, our, our insignia. This is what represents the space agency. And when designers are working on different logos, I mentioned storytelling. So this is something that um, is recognized worldwide. And what you might not know is there's four things in the NASA logo. So that red kind of stripe there, we call it the vector. This represents aeronautics. So it kind of reminds me of a rocket launch or something you know, going up into the sky, be it a plane or, or a rocket. The white kind of orbit there represents space travel. So again, really um, showing kind of space and, and going out into outer space and through motion. Sometimes with graphic design or, or when we're looking at patches, we wanna show storytelling elements or motion. So that kind of gives some, um, some motion there. We've got the stars here that represent space. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the sphere that represents a planet. So it could be planet Earth or, or planets or moons or destinations, that kind of round shape is what um, kind of brings it all together. Another thing uh, that I'm gonna talk about later too, but you can see here is that it's red, white, and blue. So NASA being a uh, United States um, age space agency, we've got the red, white, and blue colors uh, represented too. So we think about that not only in the shapes that we create, but the colors as well can also help tell a story. Oh, good point. I mean, yeah, and you bring up the word vector too, and I've heard uh, other designers use that uh, that term. 
but uh, I don't think I, other than, you know, the way that you explain, I don't think I've really understood about it, what it meant. Uh, but that's Sure. Uh, no. And, and we talk about vectors too, when we talk about graphic design with a, a vector versus a raster image. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's kind of interesting that they chose this word vector. Um, but yeah, for a different file type, but um, for some reason, that's what they named the red stripe, the vector. So, yeah, I understand too, what you mean about different design things. No, that's really cool. And who would have thought that this much thought would go into, uh, you know, a logo like this. And this is one that is uh, just a very classic, classic. Yes. Logo. And then we yes. have the, uh, the Artemis logo. Yes. So this one is exciting. You can actually see it's on my shirt here, actually on this side. Um, uh, we're very, very proud. This is a new logo. So Artemis, we talked a little bit about it. So this is our new moon program. So our charge is to be able to take the next, uh, the first woman and the next man to the moon by 2024. So that's not too long uh, from here. That's that's very quickly um, approaching. So we're very, very excited. We created a new graphic. Again, you start to see like the red and blue, kind of the white as well. Um, but quickly to talk about this one, we've got the tip of the A. I should mention that the Artemis uh, name came from uh, the Greek goddess Artemis, and she represents kind of the moon goddess. She's actually the twin sister of Apollo. So Apollo in Greek mythology, he was kind of uh, what we represented for the Apollo missions when we went to the moon the first time. And so because we're going to be landing the first woman on the moon, we were really inspired by the name Artemis. So we do a lot of symbolism with, um, she was a hunter and with her arrows and her bows and arrows, and you'll see this in this design. So you see the moon here, it's our next destination that we're going to. The trajectory is red because it's um, representing that we're on a path to Mars. So we're going to the moon uh, to explore and to set up a camp, but we're also heading to Mars. So that's why we use the color red. The letter A symbolizes um, not only the word or the letter for Artemis, but also the arrowhead for Artemis's uh, bow and arrow. And then the blue represents Earth as well as the bow as well. So we're here on Earth and we're kind of powering to the moon, almost like shooting an arrow for Artemis. So it's a lot of symbolism packed into a very small mark um, that we love to inspire for, for patches. Well, and it does, it really does communicate pretty much everything that, that we're trying to do, right, uh, with this Artemis program uh, and, and quickly, right? And I think that's what you want, right? Yes. You want, in, in, you want people to look at it and get it, right? And uh, that's awesome. Um, and so sure. how does this differ, are these different types of uh, patch? This is, a, is this a patch? What is this? Yes, this is a patch. This is actually exciting. This is the one that I designed um, for NASA. And so this one's the Artemis One mission. So this is what we're launching next year. This is an uncrewed mission. So there's no astronauts. We're actually testing out the rocket and the spacecraft to make sure everything works before we send humans on Artemis Two. So how this one's different, uh, we've got the moon, we've got the, again, we've got the red, white, and blue. Um, this one's kind of interesting because we chose a triangle shape. There's three programs, the Space Launch System, which is our rocket, the Orion spacecraft, and the Exploration Ground Systems or the team that works at Kennedy Space Center that actually puts the rocket and the spacecraft together to launch in Florida. So that's kind of, we chose three. A triangle shape has those three corners. Um, again, and color too is a big a point of this one. So this would be a mission patch. We're actually having this outside on the rocket. This will be on the spacecraft and all of the, uh, the patches that we're gonna be sending up into space. There's so many different things that this element touches. Um, the one thing that you'll notice on the three examples I showed is um, there are no astronauts because the first one I show with NASA, it's, it's the space agency. The Artemis one is the program. So it represents the entire program and everything that's involved. And then usually when we do these mission patches, we'll see astronaut names. Now this one does not because there's no crew, but the next one will have astronaut names on it because it'll actually be designed by astronauts that'll be on that mission. That's a big difference. That's really fascinating. Yeah, no, that, mm -hmm. uh, and again, so much thought and care uh, that went into that. That's, that's sure. awesome. And again, you have kind of the similar, you know, you've got the red, the white, and the blue, and there's a little bit of extra in there. Uh, but uh, I, I think what's interesting and in that, you know, our, as our student patch designers get to work is it seems to be that there are certain like standards that, uh, uh, that they look for. Uh, yes. So, so, 
So what is this? This is interesting. So this is interesting. And this is our, our last slide I want to show you guys is a lot of, I mentioned how we had the NASA meatball logo. We had red, white, and blue. Color is very, very important that we study. So we sometimes even name the colors. We decided to take the two red and the blue, sometimes the black and the white from the NASA logo, and we incorporate it into the other ones. We've got um, different grays that only represent the smoke and fire of the rocket, but also the moon. So we, we're very careful when we're designing to be able to tell more of that story too through color. So we actually, you know, choose the actual colors that were the rocket is going to be um, in real life and actually incorporate it into the patch. So again, it's, think about color when you're looking at telling a story too, can be a powerful element in your patch. Yeah, and, and I know, you know, many, you know, companies and organizations will have like a color wheel, you know, for their uh, designs. Uh, so this is, uh, this is, this is wonderful. Sure. Um, so are you, I, I'm ready. I'm excited. I want to get uh, into creating. Me too. That's, that's cool. Uh, so to do that, um, we are going to introduce and bring in one of our uh, esteemed colleagues, and that is uh, Mr. David Lockhart. And some of you, if you're familiar with Tinker, know him as, you know, our educator support coach, uh, but he is also just an amazing all around guy, a uh, former teacher, tech coach. He is our master Tinker trainer. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Mr. Lockhart, uh, to CodeLab. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. We have this amazing artist from NASA, and I'm going to do the project, and I can't draw, so it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's okay. So, what, what's going to be fun is that uh, um, Ms. Crane can help, you know, what is a, how would a non-artist uh, approach uh, <laughs> this program? That'll, that'll work. Um, are you ready for me to kind of share my screen and go? Yeah, Ms. Crane, you can keep your camera on so we can still see you. You know, it's, uh, it's great. Perfect. It's okay. uh, no problem there. Uh, but yeah, why don't you go ahead and share your screen, Mr. Lockhart, and uh, yeah. Let's All see. right. So when you open up the, net, the design and mission patch project, you have this great tutorial over here and you have kind of the project and your code goes in the middle space. You can draw over here. Now, the key with this project is that you can get super creative with this. There's all kinds of um, different things you can do with it, different pieces you can add. And so we're going to kind of walk through a lot of those today. And we'll kind of use the tutorial as a base to kind of show you principles, but you can always go back and read the tutorial first. Um, and so kind of the first step in the tutorial is that you want to go and draw your patch. Now, here's where you're going to see my great art skills. Um, we're going to add to our patch. We're going to add a stick man for me. I know you kids out there, you probably are going to add amazing things. We're going to kind of keep it simple because I want to show you a principle that you can animate that person pretty easily. And a stick man does a really good job of showing that. And so I'm going to come over here and hit add actor. And I'm going to go to this drawing tool. And I'm going to come and look at this drawing tool. And I have a couple of different things I can do. Number one, up here with the pencil, I actually want the lines not to be as thick. So if I click on that, I can actually lower that down. Where And then if you want really thick lines, you can do that as well. I'm also going to change the color. We're going to change it to black uh, just because. And then I'm going to go and we're going to draw my stick man. And again, you can, my art skills are amazing. I say that sarcastically. And we'll, we'll put his arms down for right now. And the key here, the reason that I want to draw it this way is because I want to show you something that's actually really cool about this is if I take this stick man and I come up here to this corner where it's right where it says costumes, there's a little button that looks like a plus sign right there. If I do that, it's gonna actually duplicate that stick man. And so what I can do is I can actually come in here and I can say, all right, I'm gonna erase his arms and his legs, not his body, but we'll fix that in a second. And I'm going to draw them at a different angle because what we what you're going to end up doing is that you can actually code some stop motion animation. So we're going to draw his arms up. And I know this is probably not the same and we'll draw his legs up like he's jumping. And so now we're going to hit save. And so what this does is it actually saves our actor to our patch. And what we can do is we can take that actor and I don't want to take the patch. We, there's an undo button up here if I do that. I want to click the actor actually, and I want to come with the actor, and I want to I want to bring his size down so he fits better on my patch. 
So there we go, he's on my patch. Now the other part that I can do here is, so you don't have to watch me draw again, mm -hmm. is that if you hit add actor over here, there's also this media library that has great space oriented things in there. Um, there's tons and tons of graphics. And so if I click this media library and if I scroll down in this, there is a spaced theme area. And so what I can do is I can start adding some graphics that are much better drawn than I ever will. So I can click Earth, and now we have Earth in here. We can move Earth so over. Go just, ahead. Uh, I'm really curious, but how many, are there other space graphics in there, things that uh, students can use? Oh yeah, so if um, I click Add Actor, I was gonna go back and do some more in there as well. So if I go back to Media Library and I come down to Space, mm -hmm. There's, t there's all kinds of astronauts, and we'll use an astronaut in a second. There's buildings, there's Earth. If you keep scrolling down, we'll use the moon next. There's all kinds of planets and satellites and space vehicles, and you'll see us use some of those in the next couple of projects. Oh, wow. Um, there's also some aliens, too, um, and we'll, we'll have that one in a second. Even though I know that's not the true nature of NASA, we'll, we'll add that kind of fun spin in a second. <laughs> Hey, that's, it will be soon. Uh, someday, yeah. And so we're going to add this. We're going to add another planet. Why don't we add one more planet just for fun? So we'll add this planet as well. And we're going to, uh, I don't want to, I want to move it. So we're going to move it over here. And now the next kind of step that I want to do here is I actually want to go. And the reason I didn't do this first is because if you erase the background of the actual patch, it's gonna also erase the stick man to do, this, to do the stop motion. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna go and do a color to the patch. And all I have to do to do that is come over here to the patch actor, click this little edit button. And now I have the circle here and I can pick whatever color I want. So we'll just pick blue for now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this paint can that's over here on the left side. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go and now I have that color. Now, one idea I had, but this would take lots of time and that we don't have, is you also have the triangle patch here. Um, for that, you could go and you could basically even make this project a history of patches and you do multiple patches that rotate and you can code to actually rotate. But we're gonna save that so we can have that patch in there. Now we have him in there as well. And then the other thing that we can add into this patch is we could come here and we can add a text actor. And so if I come down here where it says add a text actor, it's gonna ask me for the text and we'll just say something like, not if I can actually spell every time I get on a live and spelling is always the key, Same jump in, into space since our actor's gonna jump. And we can have, we that actor is here, but it actually comes up on start. So we're gonna, because it's got the on start, it comes with a little bit of code. And what we can do is we can also change the color. So we'll change it to white since white works well on that. And we can also downsize it a bit because it's gonna come up really big if we do it that way. Sure. And so if I press play, you can see it's here and I actually probably wanna grow it just a little bit. So let's move it. We're gonna move it over just a hair and we're gonna make the text a little bit bigger and we can press play and now you have that in there. So now we have kind of the essentials of our patch. If we click next, the next kind of thing is, can you actually add some animation to it? And so we've already set the stick man up to actually add animation and we're actually gonna click right. next. Again. David, I'm gonna ask Go you just to pause real quick because we do have a NASA expert. And so the first thing I'm um, gonna, I'm thinking of before you add the animation. Yep. Is, um, Amy, what do you think is, would be a good vector for this particular uh, graphic. What, what, what are you Ooh. thinking? You can see, I can see where you're going, where David's mind is going with aliens and stuff like that. What, uh, <laughs> what might be a good vector? That's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of something that shows motion, like three stripes or, or something like that. Um, yeah, something that's that's launching. Uh, that's what I go to for every time I think of space. I think you know, going straight up or or, or motion. So that's what I'm immediately thought as I'm watching you tell the story. Well, you did right. have to incorporate that now. I just wanted to. <laughs> I wanted us to put a pin in that and think of okay. Well, you know, before my project is done, 
uh, I got to put in a vector. So uh, just something to think about. So, <laughs> so, so, so something that you can do, I won't go all the way with it, but if I click add actor and I use the drawing tool, you actually have some drawing where you can actually draw lines and shapes and you could add some of that in as you go and you can actually even animate it as well. That's great. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. All right. So, so let's, an let's animate it. Let's see how that works. Awesome. So we have our little stick man. We're actually going to animate him. And so we're going to come over here. And the idea is it's a real simple animation, but think of the creativity that you can do here. You can animate spaceships and astronauts and all kinds of other things. It, it's a real simple kind of block set is that I want to go on start. So when I press play and actually let's stop this. So he, he'll, he'll do it when we do it, when we're ready, when I press play, he's going to start that project. I'm going to do a forever loop. So he keeps that animation. I'll add next costume because what we did is we duplicated that and we added a costume and then I'm going to add a weight block too, because, and actually let's do this just to show you what this looks like. If I don't, if I don't add a weight block, you can see he goes super, super fast because he's not waiting in between those costume changes. So if I add a weight block, you can actually come here and you can go and add, uh, we can say 0.5, sure, we'll start there. And now he's gonna do his kind of, he's jumping into space. So we've added that kind of animation piece here. Can you go full screen on that so we can see that? I can. So now he's jumping and you, and really the whole idea is I know my art skills aren't great, but I know those kids out there, the creativity is adding those costumes. You can change them to almost anything. And just with a little bit of code, you can start animating that really easily. Right. And so like Amy had mentioned too, like if, if they wanted to create a rocket ship or something there, that kind of circles or whatever, that's basically a great way that particular piece uh, to start doing some sort of animation that that rotates. Um, so David, I'm going to go ahead and just stop your sharing for just a moment. Yep. Um, and Amy, I just wanted to uh, think about this because I'm sure there's got to be some resources, got to be some places where students can go to kind of get inspired. Like obviously the stuff that you already shared is pretty cool, sure. um, but there's got to be other, other places, right? Um, where they can go and kind of get some ideas. Yes, I'm going to see, let's see. One of the things, I'm going to see if I can share my screen. Yep. Are you seeing it? Do. Awesome. Oh, okay. I Is was just working? going, do I, yeah, it looks great. I was going, do I need to stop sharing mine? But you're good, go. No, I just want to show really quick. There's a couple Perfect. links that we're going to be sharing at the end of the lesson. Um, I love to, to go back and look at um, mission patches that were done before. So I've sent some links for Apollo, our space station. These are, I just pulled this really quickly up, the space shuttle. And so this will kind of tell you some, some things that we've done. Again, a lot of action, a lot of, you can start seeing the names of the astronauts. So when I get started with a project, I kind of see um, just getting inspired by not only the shape, but also NASA does a lot of patches too, where there's a lot going on. So sometimes they're very simple. Sometimes like this one's just the shuttle. Uh, we've got an Eagle. I look at, at different icons and different things that we're doing. So this is just one of many, many links uh, that we can also share um, different places to get NASA imagery as well. Well, that's really helpful because sure. what we want to do is, yeah, we want to know like what, you know, we, when you're a designer, you got to get inspired, right? And uh, so uh, we're going to share those links, by the way, I saved them. We're going to share them with students so they can uh, uh, get inspired and, and, and take a look at those. David, is there anything else you wanted to walk us through? Um, so right there? there, so there are several right. other steps to this project and we can kind of go through these a bit quickly. And so the idea being that you have lots of other things you can do here. And so for one, you can do something like movement. And so if I wanted to add an actor again, and I want to, and here's a key with kind of the graphics they're going to, they're going to share is that you can always upload those. And so you could even use those as kind of a base to create if that's okay with Amy, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, sure. But, then, right. um, but then you also have all of these graphics in here. And so you can add really cool things like you could add an astronaut man right here and you can actually have him move around your project. And so if I come and do this and I pull him up into the corner, 
one of the kind of key, one of the kind of cool movements that you can do is you can actually use what's called a glide block. And so it kind of looks like he's floating to a point. And so if I come here on on start, I use an on start, and I use a glide. Um, uh, let me go into motion and, and make sure I'm finding it in the right place. Here we go. And here's the glide block. I can actually move him to a point based on that. And all I have to do to really find that point is come over here, tinkers a coordinate plane. And I can do 509, negative 203, 509, and negative 203. And then if I go and I say, all right, we're going to glide for 10 seconds. Now, if I press play, now he's gliding in the project. And you can actually do where you can change him in directions and you can loop him. There's all kinds of ways to really kind of do that as well. You can even do it from a standpoint if I go and we're going to actually hide him at first. I mean, you could use something like a hide block. And then he's moving without you seeing him. And then he'll actually show up on the bottom of the screen. So there's lots of ways you can tweak this project. Um, as well. And so he's actually moving when you can't see him, which isn't the greatest visual, but I want to show hide and show box um, as well. And then you can, the other one that I, that you can do is you can actually use a costume blocks and you can change some costumes as well. So if I come over here to glide and I go down to the little astronaut and I click the little pinwheel over here and I want to add a costume, we can actually make him change into an alien. So if I go alien, I know this isn't the, and so all you would have to do is that when he gets down to the bottom of the glide, we're going to put next costume. We're going to add that. And so now when I press play, actually we need to have him show at first since I hid him in a second. This is a key trick that, that if you hide him once, you have to show him again. So now he's showing there. And actually, I need to change his costume with the first one. So you can always do that as well. You can change, you can program with some of the costume blocks. You can actually program what costume he starts with. Start on. So we'll start on Astronaut Man. And, then, and now he's going to go. And when he gets to his point, he'll change his costume. And he's now the alien. So really, lots you can do here and be really creative. Another thing that you could do is the background. You could change yeah. to stars and space. Um, you could use, have other things show up. You can bounce things around the screen with an if on edge bounce, just lots and lots of creativity that you can do in this project. I would say this is a great start. This is a really great start to uh, any of you guys who uh, are, are working on the mission patch. You've got some animation, some original drawing. You've gone over, uh, you know, some how to move your characters. Uh, so it's a great start and just a testament to, how simple Tinker is to just get going. Like that was one thing that, you know, when I started working with my kids, it was like, they just started making and creating and it didn't, you know, didn't take uh, weeks and weeks. It just, uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, we're gonna get to our next segment though. We're running a little long, but it's okay. Uh, we have some great questions uh, from our audience. So I wanted to highlight a few of those if you're okay with that, Amy. Sure, absolutely. All right. All right, so let me, uh, I will go back to my screen here. And here we are. All right, so I actually just threw that link up there. If you guys want to uh, go to the resources that, that uh, Amy just shared, uh, there's a short link, it's go tinker slash NASA links. Uh, the best I could do on such short notice. Uh, but all of those uh, great uh, NASA resources are there. Uh, if you wanna check those out and get inspired um, so Q and A, uh, we have some questions from uh, the gallery, and uh, the first one. So these are going to be some questions. I don't know that Amy's going to know all these, uh, uh, but our our kids are just asking really great questions, um, uh, and so you might have some insight into this. Uh, but we'll go ahead and and uh, go through the top few. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I might not be able to, but I can do my best. Right. I think when they when we said design, we went uh, uh, really fully into different types of design. Sure. Um, 
designing ships that contain oxygen. Do you know the answer to this question or should we so, save this one? But this one can it. kind of answer because we actually have to take everything with us um, when we go out into space. So I'm not an engineer, as we mentioned before, and I wouldn't, I don't know the technical answer, but I, I do want to share that we do have to take oxygen um, through tanks in different ways when we go out into space. So we've got to bring that with us. We do that when we go to the space station and we're, we're building that and have actual oxygen tanks that we bring with us on the Orion spacecraft. So that's about as much as I know without getting too technical, but we do have to bring it with us. Uh, well, that is really good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need it. Um, question number two. At NASA, do you code rovers for missions on other planets? Yes, we've got a team um, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is one of the places that's in uh, Pasadena, California, and they're the ones that take care of uh, our rovers on Mars. So they're, they've got um, Curiosity that mm -hmm. they do code for, that they, they use all kinds of different techniques to be able to communicate to the rover uh, when, when it's on the planet. And then we've got the Perseverance rover that's actually on its way. It hasn't landed on Mars yet, but once uh, that rover lands, we'll be able to control it. Now, one thing I'll mention quickly too about Artemis is that we're gonna be uh, having other rovers too that we're gonna be able to control uh, that we're building now, that we're studying, that we're gonna have on the moon. So not only just sometimes we think of rover, we only think of Mars, we're building ones for the moon rovers too. Wow, that's great. So you know mm -hmm. a lot more than uh, that's that's awesome. Um, sure. I, I wonder, do you you know do you take part in like mission you know preparation and stuff like that as part of the communications team? Do they they make sure you guys are on those? Some of it, we, we learn some of the technical or, or hear about, it, especially when I mentioned before, where we're going to tell a press release or a story, or we want the public to know what's going on. But um, I'm not part of any of those, those really interesting, those really high technical things with the engineers, but I definitely listen in and, and know a lot for, for what we call our newsmakers, things to get out there and, and let the public know. So um, that'd be exciting though. I think that'd be one of my dream things to do is to, to work with a rover and do the coding. So we have a question. I don't know that it's on the board, but uh, you mentioned the meatball um, yeah. before. Why is it called the meatball? It's interesting. I was trying to find the story about that um, before. A lot of people, when I talk to them, uh, the, the story has changed a little bit, but it's because so many different things are thrown into it. It kind of just looks like a shape of a meatball and, and there's all these different pieces and parts in it. Sure. What's really interesting is we've got the other uh, NASA logo that I should have showed a picture of it. We call it the NASA worm. That's come back um, for what we're going to be doing for a lot of our launches. It's it's usually red, and it's the word NASA, but it's got a very, very iconic shape to it. And so we've got these kind of nicknames that we use in pop culture. We've got the meatball and the worm. But I really haven't got the full story on why they're named that. It's just kind of a fun nickname that we have for the the different logos for NASA. Yeah, no, that's, uh, but that's very interesting. You know, we all, uh, everyone I from education, we've got all sorts of different uh um, you know, words that we use for, uh, you know, and acronyms and stuff like that. Sure. Um, so life in space questions. Um, how do you breathe? We might have to say that dear astronauts in the future, will Mars be inhabited by us humans? And will Mars look like earth in the future? That's what our goals are. That's what we're trying to do. Now, not so much um, with Mars looking like Earth in the future. Um, what we're doing in lot with, with studying Mars right now is we're trying to see if Mars was a planet like Earth in the past. So we've got all kinds of, I mentioned the rovers, we're gonna send astronauts there to test kind of the, the atmosphere and, and the soils and the rocks there. But we've also got flying satellites that are out there right now that are trying to study about water on Mars, about, I mentioned the atmosphere. So we're trying to see if Mars used to be like Earth. Um, but you're right, we're, we're thinking about having, and eventually in the future, we're talking maybe 2030s, 2040s, uh, that we're going to start having, you know, base camps there, much like what we're going to be doing in the moon with the Artemis program. That's why the Artemis program is so important, because we've got to start at the moon where it's close by, learn these technologies, learn to live on another planet or another world so that we can do this on Mars. No, that's great. Uh, and I think, yeah, a lot of folks, you know, myself included, want to know, like, are we trying to terraform? Is that going to be our goal? Are we going to be, uh, 
trying to, you know, are we all going to be living in bubbles? <laughs> right. That's exactly yeah. what we're looking at now, all the different architectures. And and that's what we're so excited talking to you guys, because we could consider you guys the artist generation. The stuff that we're building now for doing all this for, for base camps or terraforming or things is what's going to help us get to Mars. And it's your generation that's going to help us get there. So that's why we're, we're studying all those different things. I'm interested too, you know, if we're going to be using the, the, the resources there to kind of build habitats, are we going to be bringing the things um, ahead of time? Are we going to be sending it there, having it kind of deployed, and then we'll get there eventually? These are all questions that we're trying to answer now at NASA. Well, I love it because you guys are ask, you know, answering These are great. The questions. And, you know, just how far we've come with NASA over the last few years, uh, landing on astronauts and or landing on asteroids. And I mean, it's 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 the one of the most exciting times. Sure. So I uh, am going a little long and I'm sorry about that. Um, we have questions, but uh, I want to go ahead and, and kind of wrap things up a little bit uh, if it's OK. But I'm so excited that you joined us. Thank um, you. These students, these guys online, though, they have they want to know kind of like what's happening. I, I promised them some links and some resources. So I'm going to make sure that they get those links. But if you want to know, we're doing these shows all day, all day, every week uh, or every day this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday as well. We have more NASA guests that we're bringing on. Uh, but if you want to put it in your calendar, you can uh, go to go tinker slash NASA HOC 20. I believe that is um, uh, case sensitive. So you can always pause your video and, and copy that down. Uh, what are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we are doing build a lunar habitat. Uh, and that is the same time, same channel, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and we are bringing on two aerospace engineers. That's Emily Judd and Paul Kessler are going to be joining us tomorrow. Uh, again, just, uh, you know, great minds. Uh, it's exciting to have, uh, have these folks on. Now, if, you, if that's not enough and students want a little bit more fun to have this week, uh, you can also take part in the Holiday Code Jam. So this is, uh, you know, just, again, celebrate. Uh, this gives you an opportunity to not only take what you've made, you know, and submit it to like win prizes for your classroom. So you can go to gotinker slash holiday code jam. That's lowercase. Um, and then if you want to get the virtual backgrounds like I have over here, uh, you can get those uh, if you go to gotinker slash virtual backgrounds. All right, hopefully that one's easier, uh, easy to, uh, to remember. Uh, but uh, I do want to say another big, great thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Amy, for joining us. Sure. Uh, thank today. you. Uh, I know this that, was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, we've got literally, <laughs> I want to say, literally thousands of viewers right now. There's kids all over the world. Uh, and it's, so it's like, exciting to see um, what, uh, what their feedback is. I think they broke the chat, by the way. Um, oh, so, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. So many people jumping in the chat, they broke it. Uh, but uh, again, thank you, Miss Crane. Thank you guys for uh, you. for joining us. Uh, that's going to do it for us today on Code Lab. We will uh, see you tomorrow.